Let's look ahead at tonight's Spurs Bucks game. See how Malachi Branham is doing at the point guard spot. And did we jump the gun? You are locked on Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Hot Rod. And I'm RC from the Cybertron Spurs. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with, with Jeff, Jeff Garcia. Garcia. Welcome back to Lockdown Spurs, the Lockdown NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Ken's 5 Plus app, YouTube, the list goes on and on. Hey, this episode is brought to you by Game Time. If you want to go to Game Time right now, download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Lockdown NBA for 20 bucks off your first purchase. What are we talking about today? Well, we're going to quickly preview tonight's Spurs Bucks game. They're on the road. What are some key things to look out for if you want to see the Spurs win or you just want signs if they're going to lose? Well, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then we're going to have our guest, Rudy Campos of Sweep the League. We're going to be looking at Malachi Branham now that he's taken over the point guard duties. How has he been in that role? And then ask, did we jump the gun about this team after the big win versus the Lakers? That's coming up next on Locked on Spurs. But first, let's look at tonight's game, spurs Bucks. Spurs are coming into tonight's matchup 4 and 21. The Bucks 19 and 7. Let's just say the Spurs have their work cut out for them. Perhaps the best matchup to watch for tonight is Giannis versus Victor Wembanyama. I think that'll be a great one to watch. Uh Giannis is somebody that Victor did look at, pattern his game off after. So we'll see how those two players uh collide on the court tonight in Milwaukee. Let's rewind the clock. Look back at the last game. The Spurs are coming off a brutal 146-110 loss to the Pelicans at home. It was not pretty in the second half. Spurs showed some sort of life in the first half, kept it within 10 at halftime, and then the wheels just came off. Spurs got just demolished uh, by the Pelicans. 22 made three-pointers by New Orleans, a club record for them. For those that are on Victor Watch, Wimby Watch, he finished with the double-double, 17 points and 13 rebounds. Malachi Brana, we'll talk about him in a bit, 11 points. Zach Collins, 2 points and 5 rebounds. And Sohan, he had 5 points and 4 assists. Keldon Johnson had 13 points. Devin Vassell had 13 as well. Popovich summed up the game afterwards, saying, quote, that's what you call an ass whooping, pure and simple, drop the mic, period, full stop, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it was that bad for your silver and black. For those that are on uniform watch, the Spurs will be in their City Edition jersey tonight. So those uh, alt uniforms will be back on the court. And what are we looking at for in tonight's game? Well, let's start on the Bucks side. So it's not good for the Spurs already. The Bucks have won four straight games in their gym. As a matter of fact, they're on a four-game winning streak because it's the four straight home wins. So it's going to be some good home cooking for the Bucks. Hopefully it won't be bad cooking for the Spurs. Now, keep an eye on the uh, halftime score. The Bucks are undefeated at home when they're leading at halftime. So chances are more than a lot that if the Bucks are ahead, Spurs got another L at halftime. Keep an eye also on the, the offensive end for Milwaukee. The Bucks are scoring a bunch at home. They're averaging 128.5 points per game. Spurs defense has to be spot on. The good news is, there is signs of life that the Spurs defense is getting better. Now, they're not in our top 10, but instead of being at the bottom of the barrel in that uh, category in the defensive stats, they're now hovering somewhere right below the middle of the pack in the NBA. Uh, you saw this team hold Houston to under 100 points. Uh, you, you've been seeing uh, turnovers lessening. Their defensive rebound has uh, spiked a bit this month, and uh, defensive uh, field goal percentage, opponent field goal percentage has come down from over around 50% in November to just under 47%, 47-46% so far this month in December. So some positive signs right there. Look at the San Antonio side of things. The Spurs are going to have to bring their offense as well. 104.3 points per game on the road this season. So if you go by numbers already, the Spurs already got the L. Bucks average 128 at home. Spurs average 100, 104 on the road. So there you go. <laughs> and uh, the Eastern Conference has not been good to San Antonio this season. They have not beaten an Eastern Conference team this year. They're 0-6. History is not on their side. 
So there is your quick Spurs Bucks preview. Coming up next, we're going to go ahead and bring on Rudy Campos. We're going to talk about Malachi Branham at the point guard spot and then ask, did we jump the gun? We should not have been celebrating after that Spurs win versus the Lakers. That's coming up next on Locked on Spurs. But before we bring in our guests, I want to talk about eBay Motors. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked on Fantasy basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. So whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire every week, we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit your roster. So let's see who Josh picked for us at this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. And lo and behold, he has a spur on the list. Yes, he's advocating, pushing did you look at Malachi Branham? Go figure. We're going to be talking about him next. Uh, he says that he seems to be a starter for the Spurs in the short term, at least. And he's flashed some increased passing skills, increasing his fantasy viability. Yeah, getting those minutes on the court with a starting unit is going to bump up his numbers. So, again, he is picking Malachi Branham for this week's eBay's Motors Fantasy Picks of the Week. That's eBay's guaranteed fit. Fantasy picks of the week. So he has Malachi. Go get him. Look, Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. Look, do you have any personal experience trying to buy a part for your car? Uh, you know, you've been having some tough going about it, looking for it. Uh, what about your dream ride? Do you have your dream ride? Do you think it needs uh, some fine-tuning, some extra parts, maybe upgrades? Uh, what about that car that you loved? You want to get it back? You want to just go to buy one and then look for the parts for it? So, look, if you want to keep your car running, you want to fix your car up, or you want that cool upgrade that you've really been wanting, you want to go to eBay Motors right now. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. They got brake kits, LED lights, roof racks. Bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're going to be burning rubber, not all that cash. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay Guaranteed Fit only is available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. This is Emily Swallow, and you are listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. And look who's back, everybody. He is Rudy Campos of Sweep the League, rocking the San Francisco Giants hat again. Now that we know he's a big Giants fan. It, it just feels like you're betraying Texas with that hat for some reason. Um, Possibly, possibly. My, like I said, my, oh, dad was a, my dad was a Giants fan. He was a big Willie Mays yeah. fan. So that's kind of why. Yeah. I picked up the Giants, but I mean, I do root for Texas teams. Um, okay. Just not hardcore right. like I do for everyone else. All right. Well, he is again with Sweep the League. Make sure to follow my next at Sweep the League. And we're going to be discussing Malachi Branham. And then if we jump the gun a little bit after that Lakers loss, but I'm sorry, Lakers win. Sorry, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But yeah. Malachi Branham has been given the starting point guard rings. It looks like the Sohan experiment, at least for now, is over. Who knows with this team and pop. Wouldn't be surprised if he put, put him back there. But as of right now, Malachi is a starting point guard. First of all, I got to ask you, Rudy, that, I think that was probably the best move for everybody involved, for the Spurs. Not like it's racking up to wins anyway, but, you know, at least if Sohan goes back to his natural position, you get somewhat of a guard. You know, not, maybe not a point guard, but at least a guard mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at the PG spot. What, what have you been thinking about this spot so far? Was Malachi – the, the lot I mean the, the obvious was Trey Jones but they mm -hmm. seem to be stuck with him just being on the bench but Malachi I guess was your best option at this point uh you know probably best option I would say is probably correct um Malachi did play a little bit of point guard last year with the San Antonio mm -hmm. Spurs uh he was also playing a little bit of point guard in Austin as well for the Austin Spurs so he was getting mm -hmm. some kind of development there wasn't truly you know doing 100% point guard position for the team but Better than Jeremy because Jeremy is obviously uh, a player that is obviously cannot handle yeah. the point guard position. Let's just be real. Let's just call it like it is. Not that for a lack of trying, he just really isn't made for that position. 
Uh, Jeremy just seems to be a player playing off the wing, off the, you know, mm-hmm. running right next to Victor, something like that. Malachi can bring the ball up. Um, he's kind of a playmaker, which you kind of need at the point guard mm-hmm. position as well. Jeremy, not so much. But the I, I guess the one positive thing is you get a guard going to a guard position. Right. It's mm-hmm. still not a position that mm-hmm. is fulfilled by the San Antonio Spurs. I mean – you, you just have Trey Jones. Again, I don't know about the, the whole Devontae yeah. Graham situation. Um, why they probably have it. And, again, we don't know because we're not in the locker rooms or in the front office with them. But making a case to try and mm-hmm. go grab another point guard somewhere has to be uh, number one on their trade uh, list when it comes mm-hmm. to the trade deadline. If not, you're probably going to see the same thing, Trey coming off the bench. Um, there's yeah. nobody in Austin, Blake Wesley. But, again, yeah. I'm not very high on him, so it's probably going to be a trend if they don't make a trade sometime soon. Yeah, look at some of the numbers so far. In the last three games from Malachi, he's been averaging 14 points per game, three rebounds, 3.3 assists, about a steal a game, and he's shooting 59% from the field and 46% from the three. I'll take that over Sohan at point guard spot. Now, I mean, maybe not the, the three-point percentage because Sohan has gotten better, but overall, that's a mark upgrade, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you know, the, you brought up the three-point percentage. And because he's playing point guard, it's going to go down. You know, he's not going to have the open looks that mm-hmm. he normally would get by staying off to the wing or curling off of screens. He's not a Steph mm-hmm. Curry by all means or anything like that or a Clay Thompson. So um, you're going to see the shooting percentage go down when it comes to Malachi. But as mm-hmm. long as where you see the shooting percentage go down, you start to see the assists go up. I believe he had eight mm-hmm. assists in the win against the Lakers. Right. Two against New Orleans. So, I mean, as long as you're getting a couple of stars, but you got to look at the flow of the game. When it came to the mm-hmm. Lakers game, that flow was pretty good. You saw the Spurs, you know, making runs, mm-hmm. just having really good chemistry. Um, Pelicans game, I mean, Pelican games, Pelican games. But yes. um, at the same time, you know, you want to see improvement. And so far with Malachi, it's a better improvement and more improvement than what we yeah. saw to Jeremy. Yeah, you mentioned the eight assists versus the Lakers and that win. There was a seven assist uh, outing versus uh, the Rockets and a loss mm-hmm. on December uh, was that December 11th in Houston. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, rebounds are, you know, he's never been a great rebounder, but he, you know, four against the Lakers in that win, six again in that Houston loss. You know, steals, you know, I think that needs to increase, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. I think it's just the point where, Maybe the Spurs just said, you know what, this experiment with Sohan ain't going to work. I mean, it, it was just terrible. It was just night and day. And, I mean, I was just pulling my hair out. It's asking, like, why do they insist on doing this? I think you mentioned it. I mentioned it. We just said, Malachi, just throw him out there. What's the worst that can happen? It works. And so far, mm-hmm. it's kind of been working. Now, we look uh, a little deeper and look at the last five games for Malachi. Uh, he's averaging 13 points per game in the last five, three rebounds, four assists. And he is uh, averaging only about a turnover a game and averaging three defensive rebounds at 54% shooting and, again, 39% from the three line. So, again, a marked upgrade. Do you think this move for Malachi as a starting point guard is permanent or, again, one of those things where they're just feeling it out? That's a great question, Jeff, because I want to say it's something that's a feeling out process for the San Antonio Spurs, but then again, we don't know exactly mm-hmm. what they're thinking. So this could be a permanent spot for Malachi Branham. Either way, look at the both sides of it. I mean, if it's, if it's a permanent thing, at least you yeah. have a true ball handler in that position. Mm-hmm. We can't say, well, hey, you know, he's he's a forward. You know, he's a big four, you know, something like that. Can't really say that because he's a, he's a guard. So he's got some kind of dribbling techniques to be at a guard position. Um, but then you look at it also as if it's just, you know, for the time being, could be they have something in the works. Um, there could mm-hmm. be a possible trade coming in to where you get a point guard. Uh, there could be a free agent out there that they're going to look. Somebody might be getting cut come trade deadline, mm-hmm. something like that, where you can add. It's kind of a mystery right now, but if we're looking at the bigger picture, I think we're just going to have to understand this is going to be the team you're seeing for right now. Um, and actually, I might be going forward. Um, I think Malachi might be the one guy to play point guard outside of Trey Jones. After that, who do you have? I mean, you don't want to put yeah. Devin at the point guard position. So mm-hmm. uh, there's really nobody left to put at that point guard position. No, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it is what it is at this point. You know, unless the Spurs make a move at the trade deadline, as you mentioned, or they wait it out and wait till the offseason, you know, that has to be a number one priority on their to-do list is getting a point guard. But no, overall, I, you know, I think Malachi is looking better. His passing ability has gotten better in, since he got the starting nod. And obviously his points 
you get more minutes, you get more points and opportunities. And it is what it is. So, so far, so good. If I had to grade Malachi, I would give it a solid B plus. What about you? Yeah, I was sitting right at a B, not as much a B plus or a B minus. This is about a B. I mean, it's a learning curve for him. We've seen uh, a lot more at the point mm -hmm. guard position compared to Jeremy. So mm -hmm. I'll give him a B at this, at this point. I think what I need to see a little bit more of is – inserting that playmaking ability that he has mm -hmm. to generate easier shots for everybody around him kind of what a typical point card would do in the nba yeah. right now but just run the offense run the system the way it is as soon as he as much as he does that could be a b plus maybe an a minus by the end of the year and for me it was a b plus just because the bar was kind of set low with Sarah, sohan <laughs> so, you know, again no knock on sohan i know he's not that was wasn't his fault but yeah. you know a dramatic leap at that position now that Malachi is there, just hopefully the wins will start piling up. Yeah. But by the way, speaking of guards, did you see Blake Wesley's dunk with the Austin Spurs? I did. At least I did. saw that. Yeah, I did. And you know what? I, I mean, did. Whew. his athleticism has never been in question. It's yeah. Just, you know, it's his motor that he's got. It's he plays motor. too yeah. quick. Yeah, exactly. Hey, we're not done talking. When we get back, uh, we're going to ask, did we jump the gun after the Spurs beat <laughs> the Lakers? That laugh right there from Rudy tells you, yeah, maybe we kind of did. Maybe right. we should pump, <laughs> pump the brakes a little bit. That's coming up next on Locked on Spurs. Hey, this is Chris Sabat, and you're listening to Locked on Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Hey, I want to talk to you about game time. You want to go to gametime.co right now, everybody. Look, you don't have to worry about finding tickets to your next event, whether it be a sporting event, a theater, what have you, a concert. You can get it all done over at Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easiest way to buy tickets for everything that you need. That that comedy show, that music event, theater events, it's all there. They got killer last minute deals, all in prices, view from your seat, best price guaranteed. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Again, the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection. Views from the seat in any venue, zone deals, they have it all only at game time. Look, those zone deals, so basically what happens is you pick the section, game time picks the seat, they give you an average savings of 18%, and the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. So if you find tickets in the same row and section for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So talk about a good deal there. They got flash deals. Sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, I mean, you name it, they have it all only at Game Time. Download the Game Time app right now, create an account, use code Locked On NBA for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N N B A for 20 bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hey, everybody, this is Nathan Ray Clark from Criminal Minds and Modern Family, and you are listening to Locked On Spurs, hosted by Victor Wimbiana's new best friend, Jeff Garcia. And we're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Rudy Capaso, Sweep the League. Rudy, are, are you battling the cold right now? Are you finding, Are you a little bit under the weather? Yeah, I think allergies got the best of me, so I'm, oh, coming, off of, uh, I'm coming off of the flu game, basically, I think so. Is this uh, your flu episode? I think all of them are pretty much my flu episode. I try to make all of them my best game possible. <laughs> all right. Uh, give him your well wishes, hopefully, for speedy recovery. Uh, X at Sweep the League. And uh, let's continue talking about your silver and black. So is it just me or did the, work, did the Spurs win the title after beating the Lakers? That's what it felt like, didn't it? Yeah, it felt like uh, everybody went honking for one win, breaking the streak and all that. <laughs> it just felt it, it felt fake like the Lakers winning that play-in tournament. Ooh. Brutal. So, yeah, for those who don't know, the Spurs were on an historic 18-game losing skid, and they snapped it against the Lakers. The, the Lakers and Spurs had a back-to-back -back set in San Antonio. Spurs dropped the first one, and then even with LeBron James back, Anthony Davis was out, but the Spurs managed to get the W. So, yeah, San Antonio was ecstatic. It was like they won the title. I was waiting for fireworks from the Tower <laughs> Americas come off. You know, Academy saying open late for the breaking of the rank. You know, that actually would have been a great T-shirt, though. Yeah. You know, I, su I survived the 18-game losing streak, something like that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, okay, fine. I get it, Spurs fans. It was it was a win, and those wins are rare. As of this recording, only four wins on the season. So I understand. I think Rudy understands. Yeah. 
But would you have if you could rewind the clock and taking all those arrows that night, would you have told Spurs fans just stop, stop, pump the brakes? Hundred percent here. All yeah. right, go ahead. Hundred percent, man. I mean, you know what? A win's a win. No one's gonna go, you know, winless in a season. That, yeah. That's that's damn near never gonna happen. So um, there's too many games. So you're gonna get some wins in there. And you know, yeah. I've been saying too, the Spurs team is not bad on paper. Uh, it's not a bad team at all, but it's just a team that's not going to win very many games. And, right. you know, that was what I was saying at the beginning. I'm sticking to my point on that because, you know, they, they are talented. They're a very talented team. But when you get a win over the Lakers, again, you're talking about, you know, a Laker team that was also coming off an emotional victory as it was, you know, winning that whole in-play-in mm -hmm. tournament. Uh, LeBron was out for the first game. AD was out for this game. So just a little bit of going back and forth. You called them winning one of the Lakers games, I believe. So uh, yeah, did, kudos yeah. to you on that. So, uh, again, it, it's just kind of a – it's just a win. They came right back out the very next game and, you know, got mm -hmm. blown out by the Pelicans, which is you're going to see a lot, lot more of that. Yeah. So got to pump the brakes, Jeff. Uh, um, I get it. Fans are ecstatic. They're, they're happy. And let them be happy for a little bit, but don't go overboard. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, I was at that game where they <laughs> where they won and I was there thinking like, okay, where the confetti is the confetti gonna start coming down or something <laughs> like, like what's gonna happen here? <laughs> A reveal banner is gonna be revealed and one we beat this <laughs> we snapped the streak. But yeah, you look it it was one of those moments where you look at Spurs fan base kind of like, okay, let them have it. You know, let them have this one, mm -hmm. you know, because again, wins are rare this season. Yeah. I thought I thought they were they were they were gonna blow it. I thought somehow, some way, this Spurs team's gonna blow that lead, but they didn't. So their credit, but there is good news in a couple of areas. Their defense, statistically, Rudy has gotten better. They're not dead last in defensive rating now. They're mm -hmm. kind of like hovering below the middle of the pack now. Mm -hmm. Their turnovers have lessened dramatically. I think only eight versus the uh, the Lakers. And we went to the point guard spot, kind of, sort of, been resolved a bit. So there are, if you're looking for positive steps, then there is that. But overall, there's still a lot of work to do. I, I had a chance to talk to a trio of Spurs, including Wim Bayama. And uh, I talked with uh, Seti Osman and uh, McDermott. Mm -hmm. We are talking about those, those positive strides. Seti just said, told me that they just got to keep on working at it. You know, but although to a, collectively, all three of them did tell me, that they are thumbs up on the lessening of turnovers. So they're good about that. Uh, Wemby just said, told me, he goes, I'll, I'll, he goes, I'll take that. And I just run with that. If that's like the starting point for building something, let's just go with that. Mm -hmm. So, so the, 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 the team is recognizing that they are making strides. So yay. It's just that Pelicans game just felt like it just deflated everything. I really thought they were going to carry that momentum from the Lakers went into that game because I was in. I was not in the locker room, but I was just outside the door of the locker room, and they were partying. Keldon Johnson was yelling. He came out. His first words of the conference after the beating the Lakers were, "Oh bleep, yeah!" He just screaming and everything. Uh, it was like cloud nine, and <laughs> then reality clicked in. Do you think the game versus the Pelicans? That's more the Spurs versus what we saw versus the Lakers, that was the Spurs? Uh, you know, uh, the Pelicans game is what you're going to see a lot more of. So that's the current Spurs state as it is. You know, you, you brought up a lot of great points in the whole uh, Lakers. But it's also for past games. We've seen a change there. And one thing mm -hmm. that uh, I'm not sure if you talked about with somebody yet, but seeing how much Victor is actually playing more at a center position mm -hmm. now. That makes a huge difference because huge, yeah. you you talk about the defensive mm -hmm. rating. Well, when you have a player like Victor playing his natural position, and I say natural, you know, very loosely, but it is a natural position mm -hmm. at five, he's going to clog up the lane. He's going to make it tough for them to be, right. you know, a driving team. Any team that comes to the basket, they're going to make it very tough. So they're going to have to become a shooting team. There's very, very, very few teams out there that can win games just off of jump shots, if any at all. You can mm -hmm. say Golden State, but even they are not a true, you know, win right. every game by jump shots. So that was the biggest move I saw is getting him to play more at that mm -hmm. five position. So the Lakers win was great. The Pelicans game was brought. Hey, let's bring you back down to earth. <laughs> but 
yeah. are we going to see another 18, 19 game skid? Um, you may see probably another five game skid win, yeah. maybe seven game skid win. I think I'm um, through there. Yeah. Yeah. I think you probably saw your worst, uh, your worst case scenario when it comes to consecutive mm. losses. But again, We've talked about it many times, Jeff. You and I said it on this show a lot of times. The first 20, 25 games of the season were going to be the toughest because they had majority playoff teams. So there it shows. It shows right there. Yeah, and they got one tonight versus the uh, Bucks. By the way, the Spurs are 0-6 versus Eastern Conference teams. I didn't know that before. 0-7, okay. Yeah, 0-7, so. Oh, no, after yeah. the Bucks game, 0 and 7. Oh, you're calling it now, 0 and 7. All right, so <laughs> we have, we, you don't have to wait to the end of the result, everybody. <laughs> you know, call your bookie now. Uh, Rudy has called it, yeah, but so they got a tall task ahead of them. But uh, yeah, I think Spurs fans, uh, it was fun just to see the crowd react mm-hmm. and you know, cheering and Wimby screaming in the air. <laughs> and, and, and I, you know, I kept thinking was okay, but you know, the record is four and 20 now. Hey, That's man. how it comes in. But they'll take it. Hey, look, I'm not going to rain on the, the Spurs fans parade for that one night. But, yeah, it, it did feel like reality got set back in versus the Pelicans. 22 made three-pointers by the Pelicans. That yeah. was a club record for them. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's kind of weird. We need to get Circle K or somebody. And I, I think Mudslingers actually did it where they Mudslinger got to win for it, a yeah. dollar, a coffee, mm-hmm. a coffee or something. Yeah, We need to get more than because you're not going to get any playoff wins where we used to get a free cup of coffee the next day. Yeah. Why don't we do it on just any couple, any win whatsoever in the season, yeah. get a free cup of coffee or something like that. Man. Oh, did you like, did the Spurs win the <laughs> first period? Okay, then come get a coffee. Oh, or something. Coffee, coffee every like day. That. <laughs> coffee every day. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, it's just me too. Or, or do teams just hit their career averages or break records against the Spurs. It always feels that way. It's Pelicans hitting a club record 22 threes against the Spurs. It's <laughs> so-and-so having a career night versus the Spurs. It's always that way. It's going to be a – can we see our first tie when they play Detroit here in a few weeks or so? Because we could. Uh, we could. I mean, nine overtimes or something. Yeah. Nobody just wants to win the damn game. The toilet bowl is coming up soon. Pretty uh, much. Detroit versus Spurs. Hey, we're done talking. We want to hear from you. What do you think about Malachi at the point guard spot? So far, so good. I think we're in agreement. We'll see if the Spurs keep that going. And also, did you have to pause a bit after the (laughs) Spurs beating the Lakers and say, okay, well, let's just see how they play again and again and again. Well, let us know your thoughts. You can let Rudy know on X at Sweep the League. Uh, What's cooking in your neck of the woods? And, uh, you know, aside from Sweep, and also think uh, something with uh, Mike Jimenez and Joe Garcia, too, is coming up, right? Yeah, so um, as far as Sweep the Lake goes, again, you know, we're starting the new year off right, trying to get things going for everybody. Uh, More videos coming out, uh, more Spurs talk, more NFL talk. And uh, I I had a little conversation with Joe Garcia for the sports uh, podcast Mm -hmm. uh, network that he's got. Um, It was Alamo City Sports with Mike Jimenez and, you know, Brandon Medina. Shout out to both of those guys out there as well. Uh, Maybe looking to do some work with them, maybe add another – Maybe another show to the network in the afternoon mm-hmm. for you guys that want the afternoon drive. But um, before we go, Jeff, I want to I want to post this to your locked on fans because you got a bunch sure. of them out there. First off, right. um, thank you for adding me to the list of bums you have on your your stage, your network. <laughs> but that's not what I'm getting at here. Think about this. Come trade deadline, there's two guys that I have circled. One of them is going to be oh, extremely okay. tough to get. One of them is actually very very easy to get. What do you got? Case and Wallace, a point guard for the Oklahoma City Thunder, is a rookie. Mm-hmm. And I, I think he was one guy that I had circled, like you Spurs got to draft mm-hmm. him. Um, he's gonna be tough, but another guy to look at is look for the look for somebody like a Benedict Matherin out of Indiana. He's not getting any time for whatever reason. Rick Carlisle is diminishing his role and he hasn't regressed, he's just not getting the minutes. So mm-hmm. he may be available now that Halliburton's taking that next step maybe kick the tires on a Benedict Matherin. That kind of answers your words. guard position 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I like this kid's attitude. I think coming out of the draft, didn't he say he wanted LeBron James one-on-one, that he could have beat yeah. him? Like, he yeah. literally said that. Yeah. yeah. His so, rookie year uh, was awesome. Like, Yeah, awesome. I, I'm a big fan of Matherin. I think he's a great player, and it'll mm-hmm. definitely cure the Spurs offensive droughts throughout the season, or oh, throughout yeah. games, big time. Oh, but yeah. he is – Rudy Campos of Sweep the League again. Make sure to follow him on X at Sweep the League. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts, like the Kids 5 Plus app on YouTube, on 
on iTunes and Spotify. The list goes on and on. Speaking of YouTube, check out the Locked On Sports Today Show. Locked On has launched the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national 24-7 sports streaming channel so go subscribe right now so for rudy campos i am jeff garcia we're gonna put a lock on this episode of locked on spurs